is the ACCAPM exam really that tough to crack? Or is it just the lack of proper guidance, preparation, or the exam technique that makes the PM exam perhaps the toughest exam at the ACCA skills level? And if so, how to pass that exam? Let's figure it out through our special conversation with the ACCA expert tutor of LSPCA, Mrs. Ruchika Rai, who is herself an ACCA member and has been teaching ACCA students since last 16 years or so, I guess. So hello, ma'am. I'm really hello, excited yeah. to have you here today with us. Same and here. Same here, Ishita. Great, great. So uh, uh, like, I guess, first of all, let's address this big question. Why mm -hmm. do you think is uh, PM considered to be this horrifying subject? And why are many students scared of this? Um, what I like to uh, say, Shita, is like that. Like some students are there, like who are just coming from the first paper, right? So they have done like first paper, second paper, third paper, and fourth paper. So these papers are pretty so easy. So when they come to the fifth one, they it sometimes it happens to them. Oh my God, what is this type of paper? So sometimes the fear is because of that. Secondly, the fear is like that. Uh, it is basically uh, having the lowest pass rate among all the papers. So students yeah. find it very very difficult they find it oh my god it is having the lowest pass rate like initially double a was even i mean double a is even having the lowest pass rate but at least like some paper standard is there basically what i feel that why people basically uh, get are basically so much like they have a uh, they have a nightmare in their in their mind oh my god the pm is the most toughest paper and all the basic reason behind that is because of the lowest pass rate but actually, I have been teaching this. I really don't think so that it is that much tough. It is only like I would say the stories being cooking in the students' minds and all, nothing like that. Yeah, I yeah. know I myself studied it. So I never like when I was studying from you, I never yeah. felt like uh, like you know any of those horrors or anything which students cook up and uh, say that PM is so tough and all that. I really yeah, that I know. Yeah, you have cleared it in the very first attempt. I really know that you have cleared it. So yeah, it's not that much stuff. You know, you basically need the right guidance. Okay, if you yes. have basically okay. just followed the steps or just followed the guidance, it's not at all tough. And that I don't believe only for the PM for even all the papers. If the proper guidance is there, you are obviously going to crack each and every paper. True, true, ma'am. So, uh, I mean, in your experience, I mean, I have myself studied from you, so I can be a little biased for you. But, uh, like, and what is the experience for, for you for teaching the other uh, PM students? And what is your past rate, uh, pa passing rates from the past exams? Like, just uh, this March results came in uh, April. So, what was your experience? uh if i talk about the march 22 mine was 100 percent so whatever the students sat in the exam they all passed and with the wonderful marks right so what i say is that when students basically join the pm class they have a fear in their mind ma'am this is the most of his paper like even what the students are doing nowadays that they basically take the taxation paper first fr paper first and you will take the pm in the last one because they have some but the the basically the fear in their mind oh my god we are not going to clear it and like that but you know that uh basically you have to follow certain steps which i really want to discuss in, in this session right so first of all what i want is that like 15 chapters are there right if i follow the kaplan book the 15 chapters are there so up now, some students ask me that, ma'am, we should leave this topic or what? So first guidance, which I would like to give them is like that. In ACCA, everything is important. And in ACCA, you cannot say that, okay, we can leave this, we can leave this. Everything is important. So because we can't say, we cannot judge the examiner mind. You know, uh, Ishita, when it was basically, uh, it was like not the... A session base was there papers were going to be held two times in a year like before september 16 papers were going to be held two times in a year right at that time we can even judge it you know i used to make the proper plan okay this question came in the june so it is not now going to be repeated in the december like that like but this is spotting basically yeah but now the problem is that that papers are having papers are basically uh, are being conducted four times in a year Plus, papers are being shifted to the next session also, next week also. 
plus even in the evening and the morning the different uh, basically sets are there so now we cannot judge it ki okay transfer pricing has come this session so in the next session it is not going to come so first of all mm -hmm. i just want the very first one that student should not leave anything each and every topic is important but yes i just want to give my experience what my experience says like the budgeting unit and the performance measurement units these are the most most important units of the entire pm paper okay so even if you like do the budgeting variances okay the performance measurement of the npos the private sector organizations okay transfer rising so you can basically expect at least 50% paper from this session this one only like if i talk about the kaplan book so from 9 to 15 chapters even if you do that at least 50% is definitely going to come from that okay and what i just basically like to say is that students sometimes fail because they don't get the proper guidance and all like ishita i have been teaching for like i joined lsvc i think that was my lucky day i joined it on 25th july 2006 okay and it has now oh been like as our teachers like you know yeah. <laughs> it was really <laughs> great thanks for that so in 25th july 2022 it is going to be 15 uh, 16 years a very long journey and what i have because it has been so much experience so now what we do in the lspc that when i'm teaching the pm class now i basically know in what manner the examiner can twist it okay yes. so basically i just tell, i just tell the students okay that examiner can ask you like this examiner can ask you like this because in the pm paper whatever the even options are there like sometimes there are certain students who say mom oh my god one paper was wonderful it was apt it was very good all the answers were coming but examiner has set up the mcqs in such a manner that he will try to basically he just yeah, yeah. basically yes. so if your concepts are clear then obviously so in that case now there is one very important guidance which i want to give here and you know it is definitely going to help the students so just listen it carefully okay. it is from my personal experience because pm is that paper which is not a taxation paper or a law paper so as such universal truth is not there so whatever the statements contain may and can 99.99% that statements are true okay so this is the one this is the one judgment i can give you and this is absolutely true now whatever the students are now listening me if they follow this definitely they can they can use this and they will try it okay i'm not saying you to make a rota of that but if suppose you are confused in any particular pm statement and if any statement is saying may and can 99% that statement is correct if any statement is saying always yes 99% so this is false Okay. okay so like this is sort of some trick that can help us save time in the yeah. exam you say yeah. right? time in the examination so. or you can use this basically if you are basically stuck somewhere you are not you are not able to get it so you can use that, that trick but obviously that is a trick only but ultimately it depends upon like you are applying your knowledge or not like yeah. what i do in the class i basically give the students all the notes and everything like you also know that the transfer pricing i give my own notes okay yes. absorption costing marginal costing variances like people basically stuck in the advanced variances because the way it has been uh, like given sometimes students get stuck in that but even in the advanced variances also i give my own formulas and that formulas are so much easy students never get stuck in that okay they can easily apply the formulas okay yes, and yes. plus what i try to is basically whatever the mocks are there we conduct basically all the mocks in lsbca on the test switch platform so students basically get a knowledge of the platform like the way it is going to be in the examination the real examination the way it is going to be there the same experience they are getting here because as we are platinum providers so uh, we are having the access of all those facilities which are basically possible for the platforms so we are conducting all the pm mocks on that platform only okay like you know that there are basically five units in the pm okay yes. so i conduct all the five units on the test reach okay mm -hmm. and then whatever the units i i take at least five mocks and those five mocks are also being conducted on the test reach platform now when students have given 10 papers on the test reach 
obviously they have gained the knowledge of like how to do the paper on the test reach and how to basically use the tools in the, of the excel and the spreadsheet so they don't get stuck in that plus what i do and now just tell you what i do like there are 15 chapters so what i do mm -hmm. is like first chapter done test is done Second chapter done. Test is yeah. done. I remember yeah. there were so many tests while I was studying. It was like one chapter done. Test second done. Test and there were unit tests and all. There were yeah. so many tests on in this subject. Yeah. So at least you know sometimes uh, like students also. Uh, it's a joke only. Students said, "Oh, this, this is the man no, who takes so many tests." Okay. Yeah. So, so it happens like this. Yeah. It it obviously happens like this. So you can can't even believe it. Like it it is more than forty plus tests in the PM only. Like it does. It is going to be like first of all the unit wise step, the page chapter wise test. Then when the chapters are done, unit wise test. Okay. And like when one chapter is done, on the same day you will be getting the questions from the kit also. Like you have to do this question, you have to do this question. So revision is also going side by side. The tests yeah, are also going side by that side. That was my next question only. That uh, what should be the approach towards the exam kit? Because I have seen many students who were uh, studying uh, when I was also studying. Uh, what they used to do was no, we will first pick up the syllabus and then we'll do the question practice in the end. So, uh, but I uh, followed your advice actually. The, I yeah. followed whatever homework you gave and did uh, the questions as well. It helped me. But uh, what would be your advice on that? That strict uh, advice that what should uh, the students do for this? The kit like the approach, Ashita, I follow. You know that even in the March 22, we have a 100% result in the PM, right? I think the only approach which is the best one is, which I basically say to all the students, whether they're taking classes or not, but this is the best approach, what you should do. I always even tell my students, like whatever the book you are following, I'm not obviously saying that you should follow the Kaplan only, like even if you're following the BBB, the right trick is to just complete the question, complete the chapter from the book, okay? Then do the same questions from the kit. Okay, then mm -hmm. even you can follow some other kit, you can buy some more kit, you can like if you're following the Kaplan, you can follow the BPP for the for the an accessory material, or if you're following the Kaplan BPP, and then you can follow the Kaplan. So one extra kit should definitely be with you. Okay, you should definitely go for buying of book from one more extra kit because that really helps you. Okay, mm -hmm. so basically, like one chapter is done, do the kit at the same time because in that manner you get to know that what are the basically problems I am having so that you can ask your teacher, your mentor at that moment only. Because some students they really know they really think, okay, we are just doing complete the slavers, I am going to do it afterward. But you know what happens that when students are not uh, having this, like doing the kit at the same time, so the knowledge gap is there. The full yes, yes, knowledge yes, doesn't come at all. Because we tend to forget about what concept we did. Yeah. And another thing is, if the concept is fresh and we know how to apply it then and there only, then it's been more beneficial, I guess. That's what I felt in uh, my experience of the exams. Yeah. So full-fledged knowledge is going to come only if you're doing the kit side by side, right? And not only to do it side by side, but what I basically suggest my students, and even I'm going to suggest all of, all of the students, that whatever you have done in a weekdays, okay, try to at least just go through it quickly in the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The in that case, the knowledge gap is not going to be there, right? Because whatever you are basically having, you are getting it side by side, side by side. So in that case, obviously, you will be then be having a lot of knowledge and obviously you're not going to forget anything, right? And you know that uh, Ishita, so many resources are there, like the examiner reports are there. So what I do, like before the like 10, 12 days before the paper, like the paper is on uh, 8th of June. So I have mm -hmm. uh, kept the examiner report class on uh, examiner report of the, my PM students on like 30th of May, right? Okay. So in, you know that whatever the examiner reports are there now, there are two MCQs in every examiner report, which are the most tricky one. The students mm. find it more difficult. So I used to uh, do all the questions in my PM class. So students get to know, okay, this type of question can come. Because some students, they don't follow the examiner report at all. But I just tell you, even this time also my students told me that four questions came as it is from the examiner report itself. That's right. So even I think that the examiner's report are the depth. If yeah, you must follow them. 
uh, I mean, like, even if you are attempting the mock test yourself or anything, or uh, if you're following some learning provider or whatever, you must follow the examiner report. Yeah, definitely. You should follow the examiner report. And even in some examiner reports, they are, yeah, they've even given the OTs also. Like I was following the examiner report of, I think, September 21. They have even given the OTs in that also. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, like in their past papers, they just skip the constructive response questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, and students normally say, ma'am, like the way it is being given in the kit, the questions didn't come like that. So you have to follow the examiner reports that actually you can get an idea regarding what type of questions can actually come. Yes. Okay. And you can make shortcuts. You can basically decide also that you can also decide the allocation of time. Now, students even don't allocate the time. Like, you know that the paper is of three hours, right? And mm -hmm. uh, 60 marks are the MCQs and 40 marks is the long. So I always suggest my students to complete the MCQs in, in one and a half hour. Okay. So that one and a half hour is fair for you to do the all the long questions because by because MCQs, you don't you not have to write anything. Okay, you have to just uh, read it and you have to just even oh, type it. It will hardly take a text or what. It's it's only like that. Okay, so I always prefer that students should basically at least try to complete all the MCQs and do the MCQs first because obviously they are much more uh, marks giving as compared to the long because long questions of the PM are basically the trickiest one. Okay, and students sometimes say, ma'am, it was a very different kind of question. You know, Ishita, if you work on a concept, I would definitely say if your concepts are clear, whatever the paper is going to come, definitely you are going to uh, have, do it. I just give you my experience. Yeah, yeah, like right. when I uh, gave the PM paper, okay, so I was basically teaching in the LSBCA. But you know that uh, sir always has an approach that if you are teaching ACCA, you yourself should have at least the knowledge of the ACCA papers. Like mm -hmm. even in our institute, you know that the whatever the even CA faculties are there, they have also given that respective paper. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So basically, uh, what was the problem was coming that uh, PM students were basically not getting the good results at all. Okay, and they were finding the paper very difficult. So, uh, sir suggested me that Ruchika, first of all, you give the PM paper. And if you scored like more than 60, then only I'm going to give you this uh, exam, okay, to teach the student. Because you yourself, you show now that you are the expert one. This Again, I guess you also get a bit of confidence once you've yeah. yourself qualified it. So confidence, Ishita, the pattern of the paper, you get so much you knowledge. The experience, you felt it yourself. So, uh, like you, they say na, that uh, you don't know, you've not been through it. So, yeah. you say that I have been through it, whatever I'm telling you, I'm telling you from the experience only. Yeah, so that is why I just wrote the paper and seriously, um, I was not very serious in writing the exam. So, I was like, okay, I have to give the paper, I will give the paper. And I studied just for two days and I gave the paper. Okay. okay. And I don't know, I have written it. Obviously, I must have written it good only because I got 76 marks in my very first attempt. And when the result came, I was even not aware of, okay, the result is coming. Now that my student's result is there, I always not, never sleep the entire night. But yes, that I, is basically, that. I was not even aware of that my result is coming. And even sir told me, sir told me, oh, Richika, you have got 76 marks. So, uh, why I that happened? From this, sorry to interrupt, I just remembered one thing that I, I know when it was my time for ACC exams, I used to sleep on my result day. But you used to wake me up every time when it was result time. That is it yeah. wake up. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That ki, now my student's result is there and I'm not able to sleep the entire night. Really? But for my result, I was totally like, okay, okay, it is going to pass and what. And you know, I got 76 months. Now students sometimes ask him, how you got 76 marks in the PM paper. You know that I have my concepts crystal clear. If you have crystal clear concepts, like students sometimes even ask me, ma'am, should I do this question? Should I do this question? Even if like you are falling short of time, just work on your concepts. Even if you don't, you are not able to do the kit, just complete all the chapters. Okay. Just complete the examiner report. Just complete the past exam papers. Then also you are able to clear it. Okay, so the basically I would say the mantra is the right guidance, Shita. 
right guidance, right classes, right atmosphere, and obviously some hard work on your side also. Definitely. Because teacher is basically like I am in the on the front seat when I'm taking the classes. Yeah. But like in this May session, I am on the passive seat now. And my students are basically now they have to basically come on the front seat, explore themselves, okay, make a proper time timely man because in this time if you basically don't put the hard efforts then in that case obviously it is going to be difficult True. so if i say that if you're only having one exam one advice to my students at least effective study should be there for at least six to seven hours so if you are actually studying from six to seven hours daily definitely the paper is going to be cleared it's not like that it's not and you know ishita i have 100 plus students who have cleared the pm paper in the very first attempt more than 100 That's students not there true. yeah I mean, it's truly said that your results speak for yourself yeah so more than 100 plus students are there so obviously they are getting the right guidance i'm i'm obviously taking the tests more than 40 plus tests are being happening exam the reports are being covered pass exam questions you know even in this session i have kept one day for examiner report and one day for the pass exam questions and five mocks are going to be there so why not then the students are going to going to pass students are definitely going to pass okay mm -hmm. and so i would in the last i would really want to summarize my entire thing may or can just keep the care of that 99 percent that is correct okay will statements 99 percent they are false okay <clears throat> just focus on the concept just make notes of your things just crystal make make your concepts crystal clear and definitely your paper is going to clear yes definitely ma'am that was <laughs> such an insightful response that i got from your side i just left with two questions i mean uh, i had prepared questions to be asked from you but you covered almost everything i didn't, didn't even have to ask them so I, i'm just left left with two questions if you uh, will be willing to answer them yeah no so, problem uh, so one is that uh, many students, uh, like uh, most of the students are coming from uh, the normal route that they give the MA paper as well. But some students have exemption for the MA exam. So uh, what is the approach for them? I mean, sometimes they are scared that we have not studied the basic paper. So how should we approach PM? So what is uh, your advice for them? You know, whatever the students are coming to me. Now, Ishita, you also know you, come, you came to me from the CA background. Yes, and obviously yes. you have not also done the MA, but mm -hmm. then also you have cleared it. Because yes. when the students are coming to my class, whether they have done the MA or not, okay, whether they have they are coming from the CA background, whether they have taken the BCom exemptions, okay. In any case, I take the students from the base only. Okay. So basically, there is no as such presumption, okay, he might be knowing this or he or she might be knowing this. Okay, so we take the students from the base level only. Obviously, for the MA students, it becomes more smooth journey. And mm -hmm. I would give, just give one tip here because you have asked me that whosoever students give the MA paper, immediately after that, they should write the PM paper. It will save their time and energy. They should, uh, they should plan their exams in such a way that their MA yeah. exams should fall just yeah. before. I would basically suggest that like, they're giving two, two papers at one time. First of all, they should write like one and three. And then they should write two and four. So first of all, MA and BT, sorry, BT and FA should be written. And then basically MA and CL. And after MA, immediately they should switch to the PM. Yep. You know, it's a lot of time and energy is going to be saved because there are eight to nine chapters in MA which are exactly same in the PM. So definitely, definitely a lot of time is going to be saved of the student. Okay. But uh, there's nothing like that, right? Ki if we have not done MA, then it's not going to uh, like, you oh, know, it's going to cause any it. trouble or anything in PM. You tell me. It's your experience. Oh, but <laughs> again, you better, I, know, you I, better know that. Yes, yes. So you must tell me. Yeah. No, I never felt my my journey was pretty smooth. I never felt like that I have missed something or uh, I need to brush up some concept or something. Later like on, if, if I don't forget, if I'm not, if I'm, not, if I'm just, if I'm, I'm going to remember. You have even given the APM paper also. Yes, yes. I, that yeah. I told you that I enjoyed performance management so much that at the advanced level also I took advanced performance management. That's how yeah, I, I even Ishita remember like uh, one student was there. You like people are basically like uh, they have a nightmare paper and she loved PM so much. She said me, 
after just giving the pm paper the entire core papers are left and she asked me and can i give the apm paper after this <laughs> maine kaha no not up no you have to basically write the first of all the entire applied skill level and then only you can switch to the professional level definitely definitely okay so uh, i guess almost all the questions are covered i have just i'm just left with uh, one question that is uh, like how to uh, like you know manage this uh like you know fear of exam on the exam day i mean most of the students prepare well they are all ready but i have uh, seen that they fall prey to that exam day monster or like you know they uh, just like they have prepared well all the concepts are clear but something happens in the exam that makes them uh, like you know not clear the exam and they regret it later on so what would be your last day tip or the last minute tip for it uh so first of all i would say is like Uh, obviously, some psychological issues definitely are going to be there in your mind. Moreover, when you have heard a paper like this, oh my God, the PM is a nightmare. So basically, obviously, some thoughts are definitely running in the in the students' mind. So first of all, I just suggest my students take a deep breath. Okay, so take a deep breath. Have a banana before your paper. You know, banana is an instant energy stimulator. So just have a banana, and it basically focuses your mind also. So just have a meditation in the morning. of the paper day okay just try to keep aside the books 2 hours before the paper because you know like even in my I remember each time in my college days and like i was um, the paper is there okay and i'm simply standing and so, and, and just the girls so, oh my god we have to read this we have to yeah, read this i can relate to this i i used to leave the books like you know the morning before the exam i mean like i didn't used to touch the notes or anything yeah. before the exam i needed to keep my mind fresh otherwise i would just burst there yeah so like my pm exam was at 2:30 and i left the books i think at 11 and i never and, and i didn't touch it after okay yeah. so you should leave the book side okay just calm yourself because basically uh, anxiety is not going to help you it is only make, going to make the conditions worse yeah, yeah. okay and secondly there is no negative marking in the pm yes. so even if you are not able to get the things i just suggest my students okay rather than flagging all the things and then the time is just passing and you just thinking oh my god we have flagged this we have flagged this okay if you are not able to get anything you just flag it that that question not every question right yes. and in the end whatever the questions you have flagged just give one or two minutes on that okay and still if you are not able to judge it just write any option whatever your yeah just don't leave it why do leave it because there is no negative marking at all you know you get a zero for it so there's a 0.25% chance to get it done clearly yeah. and more over ishita first intuition is the last one so i always say my like today also i just tell you i was just uh, checking my students exam and one student told me oh my god ma'am i was you know i was uh, i was going to take one and two but i by mistake got uh, tick 2 and 3 because first first intuition came into my mind is like 1 and 2 <laughs> yes, so yes, if you are getting anything na whatever the first intuition is coming into your mind just tick that you know the first intuition is maximum times it is correct one so just choose for that yes definitely and do your paper in a calm manner because it is not going to help you it is only going to make the conditions worse only yes definitely so thank you so much for your time ma'am it was really really helpful and i guess uh, the guys watching this will also enjoy it i hope you you also enjoyed this session yeah i really enjoyed it i would like to have some uh, many more sessions like this in the future also definitely ma'am we would love to pick brains on some uh, like you know useful topics like this more uh, so that was all for today guys if you like this video please like share and comment down below and if you have any other questions like this as like i might have forgotten something so you can comment down and let us know we'll answer and get back to you